G'day guys, how are we going? Um, today I'm going to be filming a walkthrough of the Ranger. Uh, so this is going to be the first video on the channel. I um, just wanted to give a quick overview of the current running and the current setup I've got. So it's going to be one of two parts. Uh, the first part I'm going to do on the car. And then second part I'm going to do on the trailer, which is the other part of our setup. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys, so starting at the front of the car, we've got the Iron Man um, protector bull bar, they call this one. So this has got the chrome hoops instead of the black steel hoops. Um, I really like the look at this one. I think with the white car, it goes so much better than the black hoops. And they're also a bit chunkier. And I wasn't going to run scrub bars, so I didn't worry about having to mount scrub bars to the smaller side hoops on the um, deluxe bar. So that's why I went with this one. I reckon it was a really good choice. I reckon it looks really good. Um, so then we've got just a King's Dominator winch. Uh, it's the older one. Um, it's worked for us, you know, it's pulled me up many a times, but yeah, a um, bit of a hairy situation. So yeah, that's never let me down. That's been good there. And um, I've only ever run it off of the wireless mode. I've never had to plug it in. And I've had it probably two years. And the battery's still in the dark, so yeah, quite impressed with that. Um, moving on with more King's gear. We've got the King's seven inch. These are the real old school, like the first gen. Um, spotties and I've had these for probably two years as well um, they've been excellent um, can't fault them for, for the price I've paid they're not like your steadies or your light force or anything but they work really really well and I'm really happy with them um, moving up a bit higher I've got a stealth grill in behind here uh, the stock of these ranges have like a grey three bar grill um, they look alright, but these, just the black and the like deeper fins, you can't see through, I think it makes it look much cleaner. And then the last thing over there is my, um, I think four foot or three foot whip um, for my AM FM radio. I've got my UHF. My UHF radio is actually on top of my canopy at the back, um, which I watch Ronnie Dahl's videos about um, 3 DBIs and that roof versus bull bar mount and yeah, decided to go with that. So yeah. Okay, so moving on to under the bonnet now. Um, running just a single starter battery. Um, don't run two batteries to start and everything. Don't feel like I need it. Um, even though I run a multitude of accessories off here, like it is packed. <laughs> I've got winch, I run two big 12 inch subs, so that draws off it. All my lights, my dual battery, like the DC to DC charger, yeah, they all run off that. And I haven't needed to get a second battery or a bigger alternator yet, so fingers crossed. <laughs> Bloody coffees. <laughs> uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can stay with that because I'd much rather keep it simple under here. Because um, if we come around to the other side, we then have um, catch cam in here. So this is a Ryko catch cam. This is where, if most people mount a second battery in here, they mount them in this space here. Um, so then I'd have to relocate the catch can, and that would just be a pain. Um, but yeah, other than that, nothing real fancy going on under the bonnet. The only other thing is, which I don't know if you can see, down in there, there's an FG Falcon um, intercooler, and that's basically the only power mod. Um, you can see I've done to it. I've had it remapped. Um, and yeah, it pulls pretty good power now. I'll try and find those figures and um, post a photo up in the dyno sheet. But yeah, it pulls pretty good now, now that I've got all that done. All right, so now talking about tires. So basically I've got um, the Nitto Ridge Grapplers um, on 17 inch rims. So when I got these, you could only get these tires on a 17 inch rim. I had 16s before that, so I'm not selling them, going with these. Um, but yeah, I've just got Imitation B locks by Kings. Um, I love the way they look. I think they look really good. Um, but the tyres, the ridge grapplers, the nidos, they're excellent. Um, they're a 32 inch tyre um, and they are brilliant. Like I've sand, uh, rocky stuff, mud. I've done everything. They're hybrid between an all terrain and a mud tyre. So they've got an all terrain centre on them, um, but they've got the mud tyre um, sidewall. So they perform really well in both scenarios like with what you need um, and to fit them I've got a fulcrum two inch um, 200 kilo constant lift in here so the back I've got the 200 kilo constant springs 
um, the front, I've got the standard torsion bar still, which have been fine. I'm, I was tossing up, like upgrading to he like heavy duty torsion bars, but I haven't needed to yet, so I'm going to leave it for now. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, the back's got the, the 200 kilo constant springs, and they were starting to get a bit saggy with all the weight I did have in the back, uh, which I'll get to when we talk about the canopy. But yeah, um, that's that. I also run the Ironman sidestep slash slider. Um, so they're quite good. They come out a decent amount away from the car. So they still give you quite a lot of like actual rock protection um, without being too obtrusive. And they're obviously a really good step to get up to the roof. Um, yeah, I've bashed them on plenty of rocks and <laughs> they've done their job perfectly. So can't really complain about them. Um, moving up, I've just got the Pro Rack S Wing. Uh, I think that's what they're called S Wing, S Style, something rather roof racks. So they're the um, the what do they call it? Like aeroplane wing shaped ones, so that they don't make wind noise, and they really don't. <laughs> I haven't had hardly any wind noise off these at all, um, and. They're not beefy looking. I don't mount much to them. I don't have a need to mount much to them. Um, just got the awning and the shovel, obviously. I can strap other stuff up there if I need it, but I don't really need to. They work fine as they are, so yeah. And then come along to this side, just the Safari, uh, standard Safari snorkel. Again, does what it needs to. Um, can't complain. I, I like the look of the plastic ones. I reckon they look good. If I had, my time again I might have gone stainless but yeah for what they do you can't fold them they work perfectly um, also another thing that I've done here is I got these stickers um, made up by a local like friend of ours he made these up for me to fit the contour of the bonnet and they really make it look good quite like the look of them Okay, moving to the tray. Um, I just have, my tray is an 1800 long tray. Um, pretty, yeah, 1800 long tray, but it's on a space cab. So this is actually extra cab, space cab, crew cab. Um, not quite a dual cab, not quite a single cab. They've got those little back seats in the back. So this tray is really long for this chassis. So what I did was I only went the 1200 canopy because my original setup had a lot of weight in there. So I wanted the weight as close to the axles as I possibly could. Um, this is the cheapest canopy I could find on the internet. Um, when I bought this, I was 18. So yeah, not much money to go around there. So it was also the lighter so, which was really good. It only weighs 55 kilo, I think. Um, it's from Apex Trading Group. And in saying it being the cheapest, I've bashed this against a tree really hard. Basically ran my car off of it. Um, around a tree and some tight tracks, put a massive dent here on the other side and no welds cracked. And that's the main thing I was worried about. Like when I did it, I was like, oh, here we go. Like I only had it for about six months and I was really worried that it was gonna be cracked, but it wasn't. Um, so I'll show you the inside, which is very bare now. <laughs> so there is hardly anything in here anymore. I used to have a full canopy setup. I'll just turn this up so you can actually see what's going on. Um, so yeah, it is very, very, very empty now. I used to have full 12 volt system here with a fridge and a slide, pantry here, and then the other side was all um, storage with a water tank and stuff. And I was running that for about a year. Um, went to Fraser with that setup. I'll try and get a photo of that and I'll put it in now if I can find one. Um, but I took it to a Weybridge about three months ago and unloaded, so with just me in the car, half tank of fuel, my water tank was empty, so that's 60 litres, my fridge was empty, um, and none of my camping gear, <coughs> pardon me, came in at 2.7 tonne. So these have a three tonne GVM, so basically I had 300 kilos for <coughs> diesel, water, food, girlfriend, camping gear <laughs> and I was like yeah I'm definitely over so that's why I've changed my setup now so basically I've got 260 watt panels on the roof 
just there. It's very overexposed, but you get the idea. So they charge a single 100 amp hour deep cycle battery that I have in here. Um, and this is just, I knocked this up the other week really quickly. Um, it's very simple. That folds down. You can see all your fuse box and everything in there. And it has a simple um, six socket switch for some lights in here and um, voltmeter and stuff and USB charging ports and that just runs a single 15 litre brass monkey um, fridge that I have inside of my car which we just use for drinks and stuff or if a short trip and we don't want to take the trailer which I'm going to get to in the other video um, we just use that because it's a lot easier than towing a trailer if we're just going to you know somewhere local for a night but in saying that we haven't not taken the trailer yet because it's so easy but again i'll get to that in the next video so yeah all i keep in here for now is just a tub of bolts so they're just miscellaneous bolts in there same kind of thing there it's just a bit of metal and stuff if ever i need to try and like if i break a tie rod end or something on the track and i need to make something work i can always do something with that um i've got my um bottle jack in there that's just a stock one out of the car i'm gonna upgrade that soon but for now it works fine king's toolkit which is actually really good i've had that for again probably two years and it's been faultless i really like that and king's three meter gazebo which is really good that it fits in here now saves me having to strap it to the back of the tray and leaves that open if I want to put firewood or anything in there. Um, but yeah, so that's the canopy and all that. Underneath, um, I have two of the King's toolboxes. And in these, I just have... This one's got um, crimp terminals, fuses, rivets, um, some fuel doctor couple funnels, um, spouts for jerry cans and some gloves and stuff. So that's all that is on that side. And on the other side, I just have um, like snatch straps, tie down straps, all that kind of thing. Uh, not, yeah, no snatch straps, just tie down straps, ratchet straps and all that. If any, I need to tie anything to the back of the tray, which I have just a four and a half kilo um, gas bottle on there um, and just a 20 litre jerry can and again for little trips that's all I'll take um, it's plenty for a one nighter or anything like that so yeah okay moving on to the back of the car now just the very back I just want to really quickly touch on um, this so this is a Mick Hitch um, auto coupler for that's what I used to tow the trailer um, it is unreal. I'll put a clip in now of me hitching up um, just to show you how easy it is. It's ridiculously easy and it's so good, like maintenance free. Don't have to worry about like the ball or anything. Um, it's got full access. I'll just show you this on the trailer side just now. So that's the female end there, obviously. This is a male end, and this has full access anywhere you could want to go. Um, it's a proper off-road hitch. So mine is the two-ton auto coupler with override brakes. Um, you can get them in three, three and a half ton um, solid for like electric brakes and all that kind of thing. But they're made here in Australia. I'm pretty sure they're made in Lithgow. Um, and that's why I went with these, just because they're so like, I don't know, I really like the idea of them. Instead of a poly block or any of that kind of thing. So yeah, and that toe's unreal. Really like that. And just one last thing while we're at the back of the car actually. Um, just got a full size spare under there. So I run 32 inch tires. Um, forgot to mention that before when I was talking about the tires. So yeah, they're 32 inch. Um, and that's a full size spare, fits under there. And just a three inch DEA exhaust. So yeah, the exhaust and the intercooler were all I got done before I got the remap and then cleaned out my intake manifold. Um, yeah, then got it remapped, so yeah. All 
All right, and last but not least, we have the interior. So, I'll just be run through this quickly. Um, nothing too fancy. Um, EGT, boost gauge, and heads-up display. Um, the heads-up display is really handy because of the tyres. Put your speedo out, so that makes up for that. Um, here we have a Gator rear view cam. Uh, this is really good because I've got the canopy. I can't actually see out my rear view mirror. So this is a live feed that's also a dash cam. So it's really handy when towing. Um, yeah, it makes my life a lot easier on the freeway. <laughs> Especially parking around town as well. Um, coming to the front. Just got a Kenwood um, Android Auto head unit. I can't remember the exact model number, but yeah, it just does Android Auto. Um, and that goes to an amp under my seat which runs my two subs in the back. Um, I've got an iDrive there. Um, again, everyone pretty much knows what an iDrive does these days. Just a throttle controller. Um, got my UHF down there, so that's really good for me. Easy access so I can get to it because my one doesn't have the controls on the remote. Um, so it makes it real handy there. I can sort it out easily. And then my aerial, just quickly show that, is up on top of my canopy on a folding bracket and I've got a GME aerial um, it's a 3 dbi 3.3 dbi they're yeah, a little shorty and that works really well um, the range on that's excellent so uh, moving across um, nothing real fancy over there got a fire extinguisher down there um, in the floor wheel just you never know when you're gonna need it so might as well have it um, go to the back seat, so there's my two subs, I've got two 12s, uh, both custom made boxes, I haven't wrapped that one yet though. Um, but when I go on big trips, I'll take this one out and just keep this one, but yeah, I like my audio, so <laughs> gotta got have my subs. And that's also why I left my seat covers off to show these. Usually I've got a seat cover over it, and it doesn't look messy and ugly like that, but I've got one in my headrest and one in my girlfriend's headrest. Hers I did a bit differently. Um, hers is on an independent switch and it's cut through the back so that um, it's not as loud and I can turn it off if she doesn't like it, but I love it, so I leave it on all the time. <laughs> and then under the seat here, let's fold that forward. So, first aid kit there, um, fire blanket, and then under there is the amp that runs the subs, these speakers, and my rear door speakers. My front door speakers are still off the stock head unit. And I find for what I like do, that works perfectly because my rear speakers are closer to me anyway than my front speakers. And then last but not least, um, the Brass Monkey 15 litre fridge. Um, yeah, that works really well now just for day trips. I have that running all the time off those solar panels and that battery. And yeah, it's excellent. Um, does everything I need it to do. And it was dirt cheap at like 220 bucks, so you can't really go past that, can you? Alright guys, so I just want to film a quick outro because I didn't film one while I was outside for some reason. So, just thanks for watching and um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you do, please consider subscribing, um, like and drop a comment. If you've got any questions, I'll answer all questions. Um, yeah, just hope you guys enjoy and there'll be plenty more to come. I'll post part two probably next week. Um, that'll be all to do with the trailer and how that works with that setup. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and have a good day.